The Catholic Bible prohibited incest, but that didn't stop these guys. For centuries, the Catholic Church has been ruled by the Pope, a symbol of wholesomeness and an important moral and mortal voice for some of the world's most pressing political and social issues. Of course, that doesn't mean every man who became Pope was without sin. So here is a list of the most infamous Popes in history and a recreation of how they might have looked in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. We are going to start off with Rodrigo Borgia, the father to the famed beauty Lucrezia Borgia. This man bought his way into the papacy in 1492, aged 61. The Borgias are famous today for being a true crime family filled with sin and immorality, and Rodrigo's tales didn't deter people from this image. Before even being Pope Alexander VI, he was known to host wild stints. He was condemned by his predecessor, Pope Pius II, for hosting several ladies at night, and all Siena, he said, was talking about it. So when he became Pope, he didn't even maintain celibacy. He openly had a mistress, Venozze de Catani, and he had four kids with her and at least five more with other mistresses. He used his influence and wealth to take bribes, upgrade members of his inner circle, spend lavishly creating beautiful frescoes, and then continue his wild parties. It got to a point that there were rumors he had incestuous relations with his own daughter Lucrezia, and Lucrezia was having relations with her brother Cesare as well. Number 2, Pope Sixtus IV. Pope Sixtus did a lot. He built bridges, fixed the streets of Rome, repaired aqueducts and fountains for fresh drinking water, and even built the Sistine Chapel. However, you will almost always find him on any list of bad popes. You see, he took nepotism to another level. He had a habit of surrounding himself with young and attractive clergymen, and even rewarded 23 of them with a cardinal's hat. However, his relationship with his nephew, Pietro, made heads turn because rumors have it that Pietro's mother was the sister to Sixtus, making Pietro the son and nephew to the Pope. So yes, rumors say he was having an affair with his son, who was also his nephew because he was the baby that he had with his sister. Sixtus continued with six illegitimate children, which he supported through papal money. Then the church ran out of funds, so he put a tax on prostitution and penalized priests and cardinals for having mistresses. Yet he still took on male lovers, but it seemed people overlooked his private life as his public was seen as top-notch and he even was remembered for signing the papal bull which authorized the Spanish Inquisition. Number 3. Boniface VIII's papacy was so brutal and scandalous that it was immortalized in classic literature. In 1294, he badgered his predecessor, the morally infallible Celestine V, into resigning. After his election, Boniface threw Celestine into prison, where he died less than a year later. Known for his volatile temper, Boniface bullied Rome and the powers of Europe into acknowledging his authority in both religious and secular matters. If they refused to comply, he burned their cities to the ground. One city had 6,000 people who died with it. The Pope declared that sleeping with boys was no more a sin than rubbing your hands together. Two of his male lovers in fact publicly quarreled on the streets of Rome, fighting over which one the Pope loved more and who received finer gifts. But he did have dalliances with women, so much that during a menage a trois with a mother and a daughter, he sinned three times at once, incest, adultery, and breaking celibacy. Number 4. Pope John XII took the throne at 18 years old. His heart was not ready for being Pope and soon transformed his residence into a brothel. 
Going further down the rabbit hole, he took part in murdering, gambling the church's offerings, and even affairs with his niece and sisters. His promiscuity ended up being his demise, however, after a husband caught his wife in bed with John, and so he beat the Pope so badly that he died three days later from his injuries. He would have been around 27. Number 5. Pope Benedict IX was even younger than John. He was 12 when he was placed into the papacy in 1032. As a rumored homosexual, he had many enemies and not many friends, so his story could have been exaggerated to put him in a bad light. His story is that he grew up to be a wicked boy and ran from the position of pope to hide within the city when political opponents tried to murder him. During his reign, he started thieving, murdering, and committing other unspeakable deeds with men, women, and animals. He became pope again in 1045, around 25 years old, which only lasted roughly a month or two before selling his position. Regretting this decision two years later, he tried again to retake the throne, poisoning the current pope. His third reign lasted only eight months before he was eventually driven out, never to return again. Number 6. Pope Sergius III didn't just kill the pope prior to him, but he also killed the pope before that, timing his arrival to reign perfectly. In his late 40s, he then used his power to set up his son, Pope John XI. Sergius fathered his son through his 15-year-old cousin's daughter, and his son, Pope John, would be the pope 20 years after him. Number 7, Leo X, is famous for his lavish spending during his reign, becoming a patron of the arts who commissioned the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica. After spending loosely, stating, Since God has given us papacy, let us enjoy it, the church's wallet got a bit lighter. So Leo X then convinced the believers they could buy their way to heaven, selling indulgences that would reduce their sins. Number 8, Pope Stephen VI. This pope started off his reign with a grisly show, digging up his predecessor, the Pope Formosus, and displaying his dead body to stand trial. Formosus' limp body was propped up on the throne as Stephen VI shouted unanswerable questions at it, accusing him of blasphemy during his supremacy. Unsurprisingly, the dead pope lost and his body was flung into the Tiber River. Later, however, the body was recovered from the river and given a proper burial by Formosus' followers. Stephen was then later imprisoned and strangled to death by those same supporters. Number 9. Starting his reign in 1503, Julius II was known for allowing Henry VIII to marry the widowed Catherine of Aragon, a move which later Henry would challenge in order to get an annulment to marry Anne Boleyn. Julius was domineering, hot-headed, and a maniac at times. That's because he used to dress up in a silver suit of armor and lead troops up and down Italy, engaging in battles to extend the reach of the church's territory. But by far, his worst feature was his severe case of syphilis, contracting it via prostitutes. It was documented that on Good Friday, his feet were so covered in sores that no one was able to kiss them. Lastly, we have number 10, Paul IV, known as one of the worst popes for his horrific acts of anti-Semitism. Instead of being the moral symbol of the church, Paul IV created a Jewish ghetto in a section of the Roman city, forcing Jewish citizens to publicize themselves by wearing yellow hats. He was such a hated pope that after his death, citizens celebrated by tearing down statues of him throughout the city. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more historic recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow and it allows me to continue making more content for you. It's the best way to support me. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions and I will see you in the next one.